For today's lesson, we're going to discuss another interesting topic. The earth is composed of different features that nurture living things that have a big role in balancing ecological conditions. The interaction between organisms makes the relationship and connection of one another intact to maintain the balance in the ecosystem. However, the reality that takes place nowadays causes the decreasing number of different species that sometimes causes their extinction that affects the balance in the ecosystem. We all know the advantage of high biodiversity in maintaining the stability of an ecosystem. However, many circumstances affect the balance in the ecosystem, and biodiversity has a big role in maintaining its balance. Now for today's lesson, we're going to tackle about biodiversity and evolution. Let's start with the definition of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of life found on Earth. It also refers to every living things including plants, bacteria, animals, and humans. However, even if the Earth is rich in biodiversity, there are still a lot of species that are in the breach of extinction due to human activities. Now, there are three types of biodiversity. We have species diversity, genetic diversity, and ecosystem diversity. Let's discuss first species diversity. Species diversity refers to the variety as well as the relative abundance of species within a region. For example, monkeys, dragonflies, and middle beauties are all different species. Next, we have genetic diversity which refers to the variation of genes within a species. Chihuahuas, beagles, and rottweilers are all the same species but they are not the same because there is a variety in their genes. Next is ecosystem diversity which is the variation among group of organisms in different settings. There are three types of ecosystem. We have terrestrial ecosystem, freshwater ecosystem, and marine ecosystem. Desert, grassland, tropical rainforest, and tundra are some of the example of terrestrial ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystem is a land-based community organism. Rocky coast, sand dune, estuaries, salt marsh, and coral reefs are some of the examples of marine ecosystem. Marine ecosystem are aquatic ecosystem whose water possesses a high salt content. While lake, ponds, rivers, and waterfalls are some of the examples of freshwater ecosystems. Freshwater is generally characterized by having a low concentration of dissolved salts and other total dissolved solids. What is the importance of biodiversity? The interdependence of organisms to one another is a key role in a healthy ecosystem. It can provide us clean water, fresh air, food, medicine, and other different resources. For a long time, a good ecosystem can adapt changes in the environment because of the variation of life in the earth. Though some cannot adapt to the changes, other organisms take place to provide its role in the environment. Communities with many different species are said to have a high index diversity and will be able to adapt the changes in the environment better than the communities with only few species that are said to have a low index diversity. Index diversity is a mathematical measure of the country's diversity of species. It provides information about the composition of the community and the abundance of different species in an area. It is an important way to identify how common or how rare are the species in the community that gives us understanding about the community structure. Now let's talk about population density. 
The population can have different densities but the same size. If we consider the number of individuals per unit, we are talking about the population density. Now, for us to get the population density, we need to get the number of individuals divided by the size of an area. Next is population distribution which describes how the individuals are distributed or spread throughout their habitat. Most of the time, individuals in a population are not spread out evenly and sometimes they live in different patterns like clumps, dispersed, or evenly distributed. The pattern may reflect the characteristics of the species or its environment. Let's talk about first uniform distribution or also known as even distribution. This pattern maximizing the space between two individuals. They tend to space themselves from others to maximize the consumption of the resources. Next is clump distribution. It is the most common pattern of distribution in nature. It minimizes the space between others due to different reasons such as protection from predators that causes a clump distribution. The best example is a school fish. They do clump distribution to minimize the chance to be eaten. Another example is the hunting process of hyenas. They hunt in a pack to ensure they will catch a prey. Next is random distribution. It is an irregular spacing between an individual of the population. It does not have preferences in distribution since their form of spreading is sometimes due to biotic factors. For example, the dandelion seeds that is randomly distributed by the wind. What are the factors affecting population distribution? First, we have geographic factors which includes climate, temperature, and rainfall. Next is social and economic factors which is only applicable for human population. And the last one is demographic factors. A species belonging to a small population is more susceptible to deaths or extinction, caused by floods, diseases, and etc. Large population, however, have their problem, and that is sustainability. There can be a greater competition among resources. If the population continues to grow, it exceeds the carrying capacity of the environment. If the species is in danger of extinction, which means their number is limited or low, then they are said to be endangered. Threatened species are in danger to become endangered species. A species are said to be extinct if the last individual belonging to a particular species is gone forever. There are two types of extinction. First, we have the natural causes of extinction and the man-made causes of extinction. Let's talk about first the natural causes of extinction. One of these is extreme heating and cooling of the earth. There are species who are not capable of adapting to the rapid change in climate and temperature, making it difficult for the survivor to find food which causes the decreasing of population. Next is changes in sea level or currents that is caused by melting of ice. Seafloor spreading causes large displacement of water occupying land which is already occupied. Aside from that, Gases from volcanic activity mixes into water that changes the chemical composition making it uninhabitable to other species. Next is asteroid or cosmic radiation which can cause gene mutation that can weaken a species gene pool. Next is acid rain. Acid rain forms in the atmosphere when sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxides mix. The mixed chemicals can be absorbed by the water droplets from the clouds and fall to the earth as it precipitates. It increases the acidity of the soil as it hits the ground that affects the plants. Next is diseases, epidemic or even pandemic. Changing climate loses the ability of the species to fight diseases. Even though they have the defense mechanism like immunities to fight it, 
Still, slow adaptation to the rapid changes in climate and temperature can decrease the ability to fight diseases that may lead to extinction. Next is the spread of invasive species. Invasive species are species who are intrusive in a territory where they use resources that other species depend on. So therefore, it increases competition in resources that dictates the survival of the fetus. And most of the time, the natural one is the one that dies off. Now let's talk about the man-made causes of extinction. One of the country's environmental problems is the rapid rate at which trees are cut down. In the Philippines, the major causes of deforestation are kaingin farming, illegal logging, conversion of agricultural lands to housing projects, forest fires, and typhoons. Next is water pollution. A major problem in lakes, rivers, and ponds is eutrophication. It happens when the concentration of organic nutrients that comes from the domestic garbage are thrown in the bodies of water increases rapidly. Next is air pollution. Pollutants can enter the air as gases, liquids, or solids. Cars burn fuel and produces harmful gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and hydrocarbons. And of course, destruction of coastal resources. Coral reefs and coastal mangrove forests in the Philippines serves as the breeding grounds and nurseries of marine fishes. But due to man activities, coastal areas are getting destroyed through the years. Some of these activities include deforestation, agricultural activities, mining activities, dynamite fishing, moroami, coastal areas conversion to beach resorts, residential areas, and even over-harvesting. 